All right, we are live. Good evening. You're watching the Club Tracks TV show, and I'm your host, Noah Club. And of course, welcome to Spanish Sports World Network on Zingo TV Channel 250. Please remember to download the Zingo TV app from the respective iOS and Android app stores, as the app is absolutely free. And while you download, please make sure to rate and leave us a comment because we want to hear from you folks. Yeah, we sure do. And Zingo TV is also available on Google Chromecast, Amazon Fire, and Fire TV Sticks. Roku and Roku Sticks are also available. Available on all smart TVs from 2016 forward. All right, of course. Thank you all the viewers out there watching the show around the world. Thank you for joining us. And now it's time to introduce our super duper awesome co-host, co-anchor of the show. That's right. He's right here, man. He's a solo artist. He's also a very powerful lead singer and the rhythm guitarist. A very cool band on New York City. The Handful. Please welcome Mr. Mark. Cool dude, Duda, to the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm man. also doing a record now with um, a super heavy band, a doom band called August Fire. So that'll Ooh. be cool. Um, every time I think I left this heavy stuff behind and I'm doing my like, you know, you know, my solo that. stuff, my, my poppy rock and roll, somebody just pulls me out of the casket and they want me to scream again. So just pull you back in again and again. I'm, and again, I'm right? still a young buck. So what can I do? You know, right on. Um, you got the gift. Hey, you got yeah. the gift. Hey? <laughs> That's what they say. I want to give a quick plug tonight to uh, Transcending Absolutely. Obscurity. This is a, uh, a label. Uh, it's a relatively new label. It's actually out of India and they've picked up a lot of sort of the, the really heavy, uh, uh, d anything doom oriented or a lot of that sludgy stuff, um, not just death metal, but a lot of melodic prog metal. Um, and it is kind of uh, helping pull some of that heavy stuff that we haven't heard from a while uh, out of the casket, like I'm talking about. And they sent me this shirt. They've got a lot of great bands. So I want to give them a free yeah, plug. Here, look here, we'll look we'll get some thing. of their acts on the show as they go along. Um, Very but, good. Um, Really, really good band. A couple of nice guys that really believe in the music. So, um, but I'm doing well, man. I hope you're doing well. I was looking forward to this, man. We had a, a great interview last time. I thought, uh, yeah, we sure Alex did. Was great. Yeah. That was a killer mm -hmm. conversation. And uh, it was funny. Like a few weeks ago, I was on Instagram, maybe it was or something, and I saw you got nominated for another Juno, which is yeah, awesome. Amazing. And I, I, I thought know. to myself right then, we got to get him back on the show, you know? That's right. And, uh, great minds think alike. So Noel did that, uh, and uh, here we are. Here we are again, exactly. Here we are. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Yeah, good to see it's you a while. Right? It's been a yeah. little while, so we just did give a formal introduction here. But yeah, second time back oh. on the show. It's been a while. We love this guy. We love him, man. He's got yeah, great absolutely. Voice. Thank yeah. you very much. Absolutely, jazz royalty of Canada. Of Canada, really, <laughs> absolutely, no. no doubt about it. Well, like what the first nomination, you're like you're worried they make a mistake about the first nomination, yeah, and then yeah, it, yeah. they made a second <laughs> mistake. As long as the Junos keeps making mistakes with me, I'm very happy. So right on, just take them. Yeah, no problem at all. There's no mistake yeah. here whatsoever. It, so. it, it's no mistake. <laughs> you know, you you gotta, no you gotta be all. up there. We've got this. Um, you know, and listen, Canada. Canada. I mean, there, there's been quite a few. You have like uh, Diana Krall, right? She's yeah, Canadian, man, she's but like, she's Canadian, she's isn't cool. he? And um, I, I don't know, man. There's a um, you guys have a thing for um for respecting the sort of the music and the style and, mm. um, and everything that, that sort of made that, that jazz era, what it was. And yeah, of um, course. you put a nice fresh spin on it, man. Well, yeah, that, that means, that means a lot. It means you got a cool lot. arrangements, which, which I love. Um, yeah, same here. Same here. Thank Before you grow in, I did my introduction here. <laughs> yes. I'm Frankie Valley. Oh, it's serious. nice to meet you all this evening. <laughs> so here he is, the renowned Canadian jazz singer, songwriter, and actor. He's a two-time Juno nominee, best male vocalist, best jazz album 2022 and 2024. That's right, folks. Please welcome back to the show. This guy's awesome. He's cool. He's got style. Oh, he's got it all, man. Here he is, Alex Bird, to the show. Welcome. That's awesome. Back. Thank you very much. That's now we're honored, honor, brother. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I'm yeah, honored. Thank you very much. Now. Yeah, it's a pleasure to get to talk to you again. Yeah, yeah, it's been too long. It's been a couple of years, hasn't it? It's been a couple it's years. A good ago. hang. It's a chill. You know, we get to yeah. talk about music, not just jazz. And and yeah, it's That's good. Right. It's a good time. That's right. Before we get rolling, just going to talk about uh, let's kind of bring us back together as far as kind of going back to your beginning. So, what, what part of your 
pursue, pursue music when you're younger? Was it vocals that kind of hit you right away? When what kind of bands are you listening to back then when you're growing up? To make a long story short, uh, I I was adopted from Romania and I came to Canada when I was six weeks old and I started being taken to jazz clubs in downtown Toronto. And I got to see at the age of two, back when you could smoke in the clubs, like smoke was running everywhere. (laughs) And I got to see people like Dinah Kroll and Oscar Peterson and I saw Ray Charles and Tony Bennett and Cleo Lane and like all sorts of crazy people. And I guess um, through a process that I've coined called jazzmosis, I learned how to do this. And, uh, I started singing in high school. I got really into Frank Sinatra, who I feel like if you're a male jazz singer, your first love is Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Uh, but then I started realizing that there were other voices beyond Frank Sinatra. I got into Peggy Lee. I got into Chet Baker, Bobby Darren. Uh, yeah. And I started realizing I was a songwriter and um, that I could take this somewhere else. Because um, I feel like over the last little while, this genre, what people expect from me, especially at gigs and they don't know what we do. They ask mm-hmm. for Fly Me to the Moon. They ask for, you know, New York, New right. York, and My Way and all that stuff. And I don't yeah. do that because, because uh, it's done a lot. And um, if I can say one more thing before I ramble on for another nine hours. Uh, <laughs> Please do. <laughs> the, people, the people that I just mentioned, like those Bobby Darrens and those Peggy Lees and those Frank Sinatras, when they were around, they were doing their own thing. Right. They were always yeah. trying to find new songwriters. They were yeah. always trying to find new sounds. And they were always being original. Yeah. So yeah. why do I, I should be doing that? So I'm, uh, that's, that's the journey that I'm following. Uh, thanks that's to them. That's great. Yeah. And you do your own songs, but I think it, t- it takes time. I think some of the people you mentioned, folks always argue about like, what's the definitive version of something, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, do you like the stuff that, uh, that Frank did with, with, with Tommy Dorsey? Or do you like some of the other stuff? Do you like the Tony Bennett albums from the seventies with course, Bill Evans? Course, or yeah. do you like the stuff that he did before yeah. that? You know? Um, so you, you've got, you've got you. And I think what's really cool is, um, you know, uh, it, it's, it's the two of you, right. And he's, mm-hmm. you know, he, you don't just kind of, he doesn't really get second billing like he's a side man mm. or he's, you know, it's it's you and him, right? And there's mm. a lot of respect there. It's not like, you know, um, whatever Ralph Sharon was with Tony Bennett or some of these other yeah. guys. Yeah. And he, um, you know, and because when I'm listening to songwriter, I mean, it's you and him. So he's got a lot of room to play, right? I mean, the yeah. arrangement is really just the two of you. So mm-hmm. um do you ever hear any of those songs differently? Um, I think it's great how you treat him, by the way, and that you guys write together and that you're a team. Yeah. Do you ever imagine those songs arranged differently or with uh, bigger bands, or do you play them with larger bands live? Are there other versions of those songs? Yeah. Out? I mean, there's a bunch of songs on the duo record with you and that we now do with our full band at gigs. Oh, cool. Um, and, you know, there's some of those songs that I wish we could have saved for another album for say uh, strings or horns or what have you but Mm -hmm. i just felt like anytime we write music it's it's um uh, i write a lot of my music i've mentioned this before to you guys uh, melody and lyrics come to me at the same time for the most part and so i have sketches of things or i have the melody and like some of the lyrics and i take it to ewan and we flesh it out and he yeah he calls himself a harmonizer for me um but he's also a very percussive player too he's done a lot i mean yeah well it's I, I didn't want to do any of this if I couldn't bring along the people that I work with with me in equal step. So Ewan is yeah. is yeah. Um, he's not an accompanist for me. Um, you mentioned That's those Tony great. Bennett Bill Evans albums. The songwriter is inspired partly by that, but um, uh, we just wanted to have a musical conversation with each other. Um, and um, yeah, yeah that, that's really what it should be. So yeah, that's yeah. kind of all that stuff but yeah um, right chemistry, yeah like you have yeah, big, bigger arrangements would be great but for songwriter we just wanted to capture a moment in time um because we never want to record the same thing over and over again and i don't i don't like the idea of just recording to stay current you should mm-hmm. record because you have something to say and you want to capture something so that's that's what that's what we did that's what we sought out to yeah. do yeah yeah, I remember having you on a couple of years ago. We talked about the fact that you're a Romanian, and it kind of you you kind of accidentally honor sort of a long-standing tradition of sort of the traveling, you know, Romanian yeah. troubadour entertainer. Yeah, is, Somewhere is, in me, I guess. Which, yeah. which yeah. is a thing, yeah. man. And uh, he was asking you about growing up and stuff. Um, I think I was reading you went to Humber. But you went for acting and you and went for music. Is that what happened? This is true. So I, I, I'm self-taught for singing. I just, uh, I like to say that some people like you and went to music school. 
they went to Humber or name your university or college. And I went to the jazz clubs. That's where I went. But uh, I love acting and I do acting from time to time. I've been in some things and um, cool. I found that music I could control. So I laid into that because acting is such a crapshoot. There's so many things right. out of your control. But music, right. I thought, I'm the guy. I can do this. Mm -hmm. So I laid into that. And um, But when I went to Humber, I went for acting. I went for film acting. And at the very same time, I didn't know you, and this was about, oh gosh, maybe almost 10 years ago now. Uh, he was in the jazz program at the very same time. And uh, my acting building was across the street, but mm -hmm. we had to take some compuls uh, compulsory uh, English courses. And so I had to go through the next building to get to those English courses. And on my way to those English courses was the jazz program, and they had the hall. And I used oh. to hear all the musicians playing and grooving and doing their things, and I would stop and stand there and I would have this stream of like, oh man, I wish I could sing with them. It's I like wish I, I wish I, yeah. I wish I had the guts to, you know, I, I was singing, but I wasn't doing anything about it. Right, right. And um, little did I know, I was passing in the hall at that time. Ewan, who was there at the <laughs> same time as Humber as me, and Jacob Gorshaltson, who's my sax player, he was in that same program with Ewan. They became best friends because of that program. Oh. So it's weird now to think back that we were at Humber at the same time for different things, and now we are like musical brothers and, and brother brothers uh, it's it's pretty cool musical soulmates really right i guess so yeah it's yeah, funny yeah. how it all comes together so no yeah, kidding that that, no that kidding. is really cool synchronicity um, right there for sure synchronicity yeah. yeah i went to nyu and i i thought you know i'm a i'm a visual artist and i thought mm -hmm. that i would go there for illustration or painting or something like that and uh mm. I, I'm still an artist, but I ended up going for something else ultimately. So mm -hmm. um, you, you never know what you get your degree in and what you do is, you know, um, <laughs> they're the same. That's it. You want to talk about a crap shoot, right? So, yeah, that's, um, a total, that's a total crap shoot. Man. You know, I ended up in business school and so I'm not broke. I'm thankful, you know, even though I've got a wife and kids, I'm not broke, uh, uh, oddly nice. enough. So, um, I noticed uh, when I was peeping your Instagram today, uh, it looks like you got yourself a, a sweetheart. Now, my wife, yeah. I've been married for 25 years. She's an absolute smoke show, but I can't get her on camera. <laughs> but um, it, it looks like um, looks like you, uh, your love life may have been picking up. Um, what's what's going on with that? What's going on in your personal life? Uh, how dare you ask me that question? No, uh, <laughs> uh, I got very lucky. So seven years ago when I was in Toronto, um, I, um, old Tinder, it, it worked. Oh, really? It worked. I, I never, I never wanted to do online dating, but I was like, you know what, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to find my person. And I did. So, uh, I met Lola nice. seven years ago in Toronto and, uh, she was a, a pastry chef, uh, and she worked at a tea room in Toronto and she discovered and developed a love of tea. And when I met her, she said, um, one day I'm moving back to my hometown. My hometown is Cobalt, Ontario. And Cobalt is about five and a half hours north of Toronto. And in the early 1900s into the 20s and 30s, uh, when silver was mined in Canada for the very first time, Cobalt was like the quintessential like silver mining town, heyday, early days, okay. wild west of mining in Canada. All the like the stock exchange for 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 Toronto was in Cobalt. Uh, all the money was in Cobalt, and then they moved the stock exchange to Toronto. They moved all the money to Toronto. It built like Bay Street and, and Casa Loma and all those different Toronto places. But Cobalt was the place to be. And then when all the silver ran out, they left town and became a ghost town. And it's this beautiful post-apocalyptic uh, remnants of giant wow. mills and things and mines and. Um, I think there's only a thousand people in town right now, wow. but uh, she said, I'm moving back to Cobalt and uh, I'm going to open a tea room and you're going to come with me. And so seven years have passed and I'm here in Cobalt. I uh, just moved at the end of August. I've been coming up here for all seven years. So this was not a surprise for me. Um, <laughs> seven years up. is a long yeah. time. I don't it want is, to put yeah. the yeah. No, it is. You're not yeah. married yet. No. Right? So we, got, we got engaged uh, last Christmas. We got engaged. Awesome. That's great. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank and you're you both very much. supportive of, I imagine she's quite supportive of what you do then. It's, Absolutely. Um, I mean, she's the inspiration behind so much of my music. Um, your muse, so, eh? your yeah, muse. now that I get to help her with her shop here in Cobalt, which is a big success called the Lavender Fox, her tea room is doing extraordinarily well. I'm serving tables awesome. and peddling my music and then going back to Toronto to do music and hopping around <laughs> and touring and stuff. But yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. That it's sounds good. fun, man. That yeah. sounds fun. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad, man. And congratulations on that. Uh, Thank you for asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I always joked that I wanted to retire at 30. 
I'm 33 and I feel like this is the retired life. So I'm, I'm grooving it. I'm loving it. It's <laughs> well, Very nice. also, control, and, also control your destiny right now, right? In a lot of ways. Yeah. So I, I, I'm, I'm in a lucky that. position that I can, I can travel back and forth and make things happen. So that's really, really cool. No kidding. No kidding. Oh, yeah. I should go back to like the, the album, the songwriter. So how long yes. did you actually put that record together? How long did it take to, for you guys to record it, write it? Where'd you guys actually record it? Okay. Yeah, well, 2022, we got the Juno nomination for Light in the Way. And yeah. um, we ha Great already track. had a few. Thank you very much. We had a few sketches of Songwriter, but um, it came together very, very quickly. What we wanted to do is we wanted to, to, to um, again, take that moment in time of, of we had just done two albums back to back together. The second one went to the Junos. You and I were becoming very close. We were we were really in a rhythm together so we thought let's go and capture this right now so gotcha. we wrote very quickly 11 songs uh and we got them together and and we surprise released songwriter a lot of people in this day and age there's the piecemeal approach of here's a single pre-save it spotify do it and then a couple weeks later the next thing and and it's yeah. it, it it's the way it goes i don't have anything against it but Part of me is old school. Part of me feels the old ways of how things were done. So we surprise released songwriter as a sort of drop at the end of the Juno year. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think uh, it worked out that way because uh, one of my dreams has been uh, to be uh, uh, reviewed in Downbeat Magazine. And Downbeat Magazine reviewed songwriter very well. And one of the things they highlighted that they loved was we released the album all in one go. And we didn't do it in today's standards. And right, so that yeah. meant to me, ah, okay. What felt right, what felt we should do, we we did it and 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 that's what people felt. So yeah. That's great. Um, that album came together pretty quickly. Um, and um I, we just feel we feel a special way about that record because it's so personal to the both of us and the relationship we've been able to create musically over the last little while. I really like the lead off track. This yeah. song is ours, you know, Thank um, you. It, and the concept of it is really neat too, right? Because Thank everybody you. says, you know, this is our song type of thing. Yeah. That was the, that was the pun and the pun, the pun master in me loved that. Yeah. So. No, it's very, it's very clever. Um, it, it's a fantastic song. Has yeah, anybody yeah. ever come up to you and say, you know, that song you wrote, that song is ours. That's our song. You know, <laughs> I, I bet there's a couple out there someplace where that's their song, you know, yeah, totally. Absolutely. Um, and that that's kind of, you know, that's kind of cool. Things like that are, are sort of uh, more rewarding sometimes than than the money or the other things you get. Right. Oh, that's it's a very bonus. moody record, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well put. Well put. It's pretty. Yeah. What you know, that the, the and the mood of the right, the flow and the mood of the record is great. But what. Mm -hmm. um. I don't know, man. Did you guys, you know, did, did you agonize over putting those songs together in that particular order? Is it supposed to be like chapters in a book? Is it, is it, you sit down and you listen to it in one listen? Is it that sort of thing? Um, you said you released it all at once. So yeah, I, sense that you don't really no, think of, of it as singles. I, I create the, the track order before we record the album. Um, mm, okay. I, I already know what everything's going to sound like for the most part. So I, um, Wow. I don't know. I just, uh, again, like there's uh, a lot of our music is I like to ride the line between light and dark. And I like to explore both those things. I feel like in the jazz crooner or jazz singer realm, there's some dark themes, but there's not like heavy, yeah. depressing, dark themes like we right. approach sometimes. And I just really like exploring that stuff because um, I don't know, there's something about it. Anytime I've been really, 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 really sad. I listen to the most depressing music you never think of, and it makes me feel better. So if I could give that back to people, then that's kind of what I explore in the music. So the flow of the album goes from these moody different pieces, but then there's bright pieces like I've Seen the Sun, and then there's yeah. some toying pieces like Nighttime Grooves and getting into the more groovy Yeah, that's sense. a cool one too, some yeah. Groovy tracks like Songwriter itself, and I don't know. I, part of the challenge for me is um, a lot of people create albums that kind of feel all this the, all the tracks feel kind of the same yeah and that's great i, I think that's a, a fantastic thing but for me it's i want to do all these different songs because i don't know if i'm going to get to make another album and i have right. all these musical influences so yeah. i'd like to make every song different and then find a way to thread it all together so that you feel like you're listening to the same album yeah. um, and um 
That's yeah, kind of what we did. The arrangements and the interplay between you guys definitely ties it together. Um, anyway, I think. So, what are, what are the crowds like? Like, if you take this album, what are, what are some of the crowd favorites of the songs that um, that you do on the record? Yeah, the cool thing about um, uh, the album and and a lot of our original music. Um, I mean, we have a lot of our gigs. We have the the older expected crowd of this genre, but we've mm -hmm. also had a lot of really young people come out to our gigs, man. So what's your demographic like then? Right it's all over. It's all over the board. I mean, I, I did a gig at Reed's Distillery, which I mentioned to you a little while ago. Yeah. Um, we had uh, people who were over fifty. Then we had yeah. some forty year olds. We had some thirty year olds, and we had a bunch of like teenagers come to our gigs. They, they're people. just entering university. They're like eighteen, yeah. nineteen, and yeah. all they wanted to talk about was our original tunes. Yeah. So I feel I feel like um, I don't know. There's is, we're resonating with people because it's different. Yeah. It's fresh. It's not. It's not what people expect of the genre. Yeah. So I think there's an opportunity to find new people and open them up to thinking, oh, I, that's not what I thought this was. Right. So I think you're like, but you, but you, you and uh, have a, add more, more color to the two, what you're doing. So it's yeah, not the sure. same package thing you yeah. think it is, right? And to, to answer your, and to answer your question, um, I've been very lucky that I've had so many people reach out about favorite songs on Songwriter, and it's kind of everybody feels a different way about it, every track. Yeah. That's um, great. So that's really cool, too. Yeah. yeah, I think there's an uh, there's sort of an uh, an authentic thing about you, right? It's like you live sort of this, and and to me too, I can walk down the street and everybody can look at me and say, "Oh, that guy's a rocker," right? It's fairly obvious. And you've got your own style. I I love your drip. I love uh, you. you know, the suits you wear. You uh, you always have a cool lid on. Um, Thank you. You talk about how you're really into the vintage mics, and let's talk about that mic next, maybe. And and uh, so you kind of live the whole thing. There's an authenticity yeah, well about it. So thank you very much. Um, you're you're sort of uh, I don't know. I I think the authenticity is what speaks to people. It's not mm -hmm. like uh, you know you set set out in some pretentious way and said, let me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Let it's a mimic this lifestyle yeah. from you know <laughs> the 40s and 50s it's just kind of who you are you know yeah it's um, again at two years old in jazz clubs who who has that experience yeah, yeah. that explains it yeah, yeah. definitely and so is that an authentic older ribbon mic? Incidentally, like I'm, I, you know, I've sang in bands for many years and I can't stand using unidirectional mics for various reasons, but oh, it nice. was interesting. So I was listening to you, like talk about what you like to use. Yeah. And, um, I thought that was really cool, by the way, that was yeah. a cool little thing. Yeah. yeah. There's a little video out for those, uh, that that's not the mic right now, but I have a, no. a uni original, a uni directional ribbon mic from sure from the fifties. Wow. So it's most people know it's like a woman's figure. It's like a yeah. beautiful piece of art, you yeah, know, most the ribbon mics are figure eight. So sound is coming from the front and the back, but wow. this mic was designed unidirectional. So only sound from the front and it's got extra padding so that you can use it live and move it around and the ribbon won't you know be be damaged or anything but huh. this mic this is a sure 546 from the okay. uh, uh uh this is from the mid 1960s this microphone not exactly but this model this is the Sinatra at the Sands mic gotcha. right with Quincy Jones um, this cool. mic was used um, that beautiful documentary that came out recently finally uh, Aretha Franklin uh, in the church singing uh this, this oh, she cool. sang into this mic um when the beatles came to america and they played some of those stadiums they used the, sh the shore 546 um, oh, so yeah right? yeah so this uh, this is one of the mics in my stable i only use exclusively vintage mics um because i look around at all the other bands and, you know the guitar player has his nice vintage gear and his vintage amp and you know right. the bass player has his vintage bass and the piano yeah. player is playing some old keys so why, why yeah. can't i you know get it on board with uh, the groove of the vintage stuff no, that's so that, really, I think that's really cool. Um, I think, uh, you know, I'm I shamelessly for the last 25 years been carrying around a bag full of dented 58s, which it seems like the hard <laughs> rockers tend to use, you know. Ah, they're sturdy, man. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, we'll but yeah, liable. right? I mean, they, they, if those mics could talk, you know. Oh, I'd totally. Be in trouble. But, um, Absolutely. But, this, uh, is the, this is really the precursor cool. to the SM57, if you're wondering. And this it is, looks kind of like a 57, right? Yeah. We, we put the 57s on the cabinets and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. 
to mic them up. So that that's cool. But um, that is really cool. yeah, so like when I talk about like you know your your your, your style, um, your attitude, your writing, your your love of of the microphones, and I've seen you you post some of the literature you you read. You're sort of of that era, but. Oh, very much You're so. around now. I think that yeah. authenticity is probably what speaks to so many people. And I hope that you do find a new audience. I mean, you know, Thank listen, you. look, just talk about somebody like Buble or like, um, yeah. you know, I always liked Harry Connick. And oh, man. My favorite thing he did was actually She because it's like a funk record, you know? Yeah. And it was something great, that a lot of one. people didn't expect. Yeah. They're like, holy shit, this guy. Yeah, he can he do just other came stuff. Out with a New yeah. Orleans funk album. And, yeah. you know, um, it's someday maybe that, you know, you'll, you'll do something like that. You never know, you know, but it was. It sure. was totally I got a Doom unexpected. record coming out next, but that's. We're gonna talk about that there you go. I'm working with an, I'm working with an Indian label. Uh, and we can we can talk about that later. Very nice, <laughs> very nice. Um, um, but very cool. So I think you know, I, as you hone your sound, um, yeah. you know, throughout the years, we all sort of, um, you know, do do you think about? Are, are you still sort of you and you? And I mean, you're right, you're right, kind of, you're right in the wheelhouse now, and you're doing great stuff. So are you thinking about just kind of keeping it there, or for the next record, are you thinking about bringing in a larger band or? Yeah. Something out. Are you guys self-produced by the way? Yeah, I do. I do everything. You, you know, I, 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 so Eric Alper, who I enlist to help with publicity for different things. He's fantastic. And we all love Eric, but for the most part, I, I do it all on my, I respond to all my emails. I send all my stuff and I, I just try to knock on as many doors as I can. So yeah, we, we produce everything on our own. That's we incredible. control all our music. I think that's why we've had success because we don't have anyone to re respond to, but ourselves, it's been really helpful having that. Um, yeah. but yeah, to, to answer that other question, um, the, the stuff we got coming up is nothing like what we just did. Um, we're cool. already, we're already almost done our next full band album. But the thing I can talk about is, uh, in May, I did a gig two summers ago at the Cameron house in Toronto. And I did the gig for, uh, four people, four people were there. And one of the people, one of the four people was this guy named Cheo. And he comes up to me after the gig and he buys one of my vinyl, which is always great. And he says, um, which no one's ever said to me before, do you own your own masters? Hmm. I had to think for a second. I said, yeah, yeah, Point. definitely. I own my ma masters. He says, great. I'll message you in a week. And I was like, cool. So a week passes. I get this message from a guy named Cheo and I look him up. And it turns out Cheo is one of the creators of the biggest band to ever come out of Venezuela. They're a jazz funk band called Los Amigos Invisibles. And wow. they were discovered by David Byrne. Wow. And now Cheo wow. lives in New York. He's a Latin Grammy Award winner and Grammy <laughs> Award nominee. And he does a lot of like bossa nova funk and all that kind of stuff. So awesome. we wrote together a four song with you and I brought you in and on it. A four song original bossa nova EP. And it's coming so out. Cool. So cool. It's coming man. out in May called Casanova Bossa Nova Lover Man. And, Very uh, nice. And uh, so that's going to be coming out in May. So and again, is it under your name, you and you and you and yeah, name? my name, Ewan's name, and Cheo and and Jacob, cool. who I mentioned, my saxophone player. I got him to do some some flute and sax on on the tunes. Mm. Um, but again, we did the duo record. What do we do next? What 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 is different? And um, I, I love bossa nova music. Um, it's always tough to do bossa nova music, but now I'm working with someone who genuinely, you know, that's his vibe and 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 yeah. where he's from in a sense. So it, it it's really and great. Did to he be like able what to... you came up with? Uh, Very much he, so. He did. No. So what happened was um, there's two of the songs on the album that he had already written uh, and they had Spanish lyrics. And he said, "I'm not going to tell you what they mean, but I want you to write English lyrics." Hmm. I've never done that before. So I took a stab at it shortly after I met him that summer. Uh, and I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I was so defeated. I, I left it alone for seven whole months hmm. and then, uh, Christmas passed and Lola, who's always the fire under me says, why haven't you done anything with those tunes? Cheo sent you, hmm. you should, you should really, you know, time is ticking. They're sitting there. You should really do them. Yeah. Uh, and then later that afternoon, I went and I wrote both of them. <laughs> I kid you not. Came out of me, but it took it took seven months of of 
you know, being away from it to, yeah. to, to well, you heard it and it was probably marinating back there in the subconscious yeah. somewhere. Is probably, the, but I was, I was really do. so dejected that I couldn't do anything with them, but now we have four songs and we're going to leave it at that and put it out there. And, and, um, that's great. It's, it's very exciting to have his backing and, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, coming up next is something completely That's different. a fantastic story and, to hey, and then totally different. And so I yeah, think, absolutely. you know, to get yourself exposed, you know, we talk about the diversity of your audience now, but but really to get yourself exposed to now this whole other set yeah, of people. Right? Yeah. And, I'm and the, the first New, English. New York folks. Yeah. New York folks would love you anyway, just doing you. what you do. I think there's Thank definitely, you, you know, no. Uh, some some really classy uh, clubs and hotels that that still carry the torch yeah. for that type I mean, of music. Bird, bird at Birdland is my ultimate dream. So if you can help me there with that, there you go. <laughs> and uh, to get this exposure with some other folks from New York, I think that'll be terrific for no you. No kidding, no but, kidding. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see. I'm I'm very amazing. excited. Amazing story though. In terms of, like synchronicity that you know those four people. This is the one guy that's there. Yeah. Yeah, it's a you gig. know, it's one of those things. We've all done those gigs. And the thing is, right, if there's four people or there's 400 people there, you still, you still give it all it. you got. Yeah. You do the yeah. best job you can because absolutely, you never know, right? And the cool exactly. thing about that gig is I couldn't get my band because they, they all had other stuff. And I almost canceled it because I was like, oh, I don't want to do it with my guys. But I went and I found subs for the gig and I still went through with it. And that's <laughs> what came from it. So, it, it yeah, it. It's uh, That's all a great fortuitous. story. I'm gonna check um, this Cheo guy out. Yeah, though. he's um, he's legit, man. He's super cool. But I'll be the first um, English uh, singer that he's worked with because uh, he's only right. done Spanish uh, language and Spanish market stuff. So it, it, it I'm, I'm so humbled that he thought that's the guy who I'm gonna no go kidding. with for this. Yeah. Absolutely, cool. I spoke yeah, loudly. The whole, to him. Is, the whole thing is incredible. Story. Yeah, yeah, it really yeah. is. Do you want to do you plan actually making it as an EP being, you know, being like four tracks? You plan to yeah, it's just four tracks. So yeah. it'll be, we're going to do the single game for that. Cause that it's the perfect time for that. Yeah. Uh, but what we're going to do also is we're going to have a special edition limited uh, colored uh, uh, 45 of, of oh, really? uh, Casanova box novel. Cool. Yeah. We're going to put it on a 45 wow. and uh, if people get it great, if not also great, but I think it'll be cool. Well, I think that this, this day, this day and age of vinyl, I don't see why not. I think it'd probably be very, yeah a lot of units because yeah vinyl's been on the rise for the last like almost like 20 years now absolutely so. and our last two albums are on on full lps which is really cool that is but, very cool uh, yeah, sound quality it's very better sound quality it's, it's more live it's kind oh, of great it's, to you it's such really a different feel. vibe for sure yeah especially if you're recording magnetically i mean depending upon what you use right i like the stuff that i like to buy on vinyl are, are albums that were intended to be heard on vinyl at the time when they were recorded right mm. they don't sound good when you squash them down no, while trying no, to listen to not you know no, at all or something <laughs> like that it sounds like no, shit no, no, no. but it sounds great on vinyl and yeah, um, yeah. it sure does um, can't beat it can't beat vinyl yeah, no, so no, you can't. That's, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Pretty there nice. had been a shortage for a while. Did you run up against that? I think this was more during the pandemic, but it was tough to get. There was no, a vinyl song, shortage. It was tough. Songwriter to get. got us because it was. Um, was it Adele or Taylor Swift? They ordered the most records uh, uh, in a very, very long time, and it was like one singular artist that put the rest of the business into a bit of a, a backlog. Yeah. So. I think it was. I didn't know song. that's why, but I knew I that it was, it was for, tough to get stuff pressed. Yeah, I think it was yeah. for songwriter. Usually, it it only took maybe like I don't know, uh, on average, maybe a month to get your vinyl back, a month and a half. But mm -hmm. we were delayed a good five months to get our, our stuff back. Like it was. It's nerve get credit. Yeah, it no, it's very nerve wracking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> century in this industry. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was Adele. I think Adele. Uh, just got a whole bunch of vinyl plants going. So everyone was like, all right, we'll just make those. And then everyone else got bumped because of that, which, you know, Adele is fantastic. But yeah, yeah. It, it definitely put a bit of a, uh, a wrench into the vinyl industry for a while. No kidding. Eh? Yeah, that's interesting. Now, no, now I'm glad you're working on become... vinyl. And that that's good to hear. And it'd be interesting to hear um, what, I mean, New York is so diverse that they're definitely – is a bossa nova crowd there i had like 20 years ago my brother and i for some reason got into boogaloo for a while and um you could find it you know you wanted to go out and see it you could find it and there were cats doing joe kuba and stuff Amazing. like that and, cool. um it was a lot of fun yeah. nice no kidding 
My going to go back to a uh, song I, I listen to actually a lot these days. Is oh oh e oh down the road I go. Oh, that <laughs> single, yes. Yeah. yeah. Was that was that actually was that like um was that kind of guy in the studio guys kind of found that was it kind of playing around in your head? Like, I was really curious. Oh oh e oh down the road I go. Yeah. So that's a single that people should listen to. It came out very quickly. Um, we recorded right. that during our light in the way session. Um, I had right. it already written as a as a it was just already written. And I wanted to use some session time to get it out there and have it as a single after the album. Yeah. Um, and again, uh, I, I'm, I, I feel like I'm a little bit savvy in the business, but I also go against the business. So that track is is well over five minutes, uh, and it's like a groove. I call it I call it a mix of uh, Al Green meets Bobby Darin. Yeah, right. Nice. And uh, I give ones. a lot of time for the band to just groove. It's a groove track. You play it, it and you group. It you can vacuum, you can clean, you can sit, you can drink, you can do whatever. But you just play it, and you're gonna sit with it for those five minutes. So um, I wasn't worried about time or length or anything. I just thought it was a really cool song. There's uh, references in there to my story, uh, being from Romania and you know crooning and all that kind of stuff. And it was just kind of like a, a, a here I am in a in a groovy song and um and let well the guys said. jam for it so yeah thanks for mentioning that one I, I, that's yeah. that's a cool one the it's cool thing one. about oh, wait, oh, sorry no go for it no the wait, cool wait, thing wait. is like if, if if things keep going the way they're going um uh all the music we've made it's there you can go back and you can find it and you can listen to it yeah um so yeah it'll it'll all come together it's it's uh i don't make it for we we make the music in the moment to capture a moment in time but it can be listened to at any time so Absolutely. yeah, Again, whenever, good whenever, yeah. whenever people catch it, that's that's all right with me. Yeah, no, definitely. And good, good songs kind of transcend time, right? Sure and, do. Um, oh, sure I hope do. so. Yeah, no, we, totally. we talk oh, no, about we sometimes they get do. rearranged, or there's different versions of them. Like we talk about, you know, what's the definitive version of a yeah know, of a song? I was I was talking to somebody today about uh, I think Slash put out a version of Killing Floor, which is uh, okay. uh, 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 I think it's a, a a Muddy Waters or a Howlin' Wolf tune. And uh, somebody was telling me how incredible it is. I said, no, you got to hear the Jimi Hendrix one from 67. Jimmy plays Montre. Right. And he says, all like, oh, my God, like Jimi Hendrix puts Slash to shame. I'm like, there's nothing wrong <laughs> with saying that. He does. He's Jimmy. He was yeah, Jimi yeah. Hendrix, you know. And, and yeah, he was like 25 when he did that. But, uh, <laughs> right. you know, um, there, there's a lot of these songs. And it's interesting that you don't do catalog numbers because you are a songwriter. Mm. But um, uh, it'd be interesting to hear you do some at the same time, you know. But we uh, do them at gigs. We, I got a lot of catalog numbers at gigs. We do a lot of uh, uh, old standards, you know, and then we do songs like um, 16 Tons from Tennessee Ernie Ford. Is one I of my love it. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, a really cool version of that. I feel at some point I'll do a, a standards thing, but I'm, I'll probably choose the songs that King are of less the road, heard. Maybe. King uh, of the road, yeah. <laughs> but uh for now i i'm 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 still discovering myself and um i feel like the, the songs the, the songs that i sing best are the ones that uh come from me um i don't have any other voices in my head about versions or who did this or that version was the best uh, yeah. when i write a song i'm the best person suited to sing it yeah, um so i'm song. just trying to your i'm just trying like to that. keep that going yeah right, right on for sure we say you got you have your own unique style within that style. That, Thank you. Uh, you know, definitely, is, you, you actually do stand out. There's no doubt about that. Your voice is uh, definitely very sharp. <laughs> as well. Thank you. <laughs> no, we love it, man. It's all good stuff. So when you do your live shows, you were discussing it earlier. Is it uh, like how big is the band that you have behind you? Uh, you um, it depends. It depends on the venue, but usually my 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 main crew right now is uh, behind me uh, piano drums bass and sax and sax also plays clarinet uh yes, and i feel oh, like we got a we got a good vibe we get uh a good rhythm section a little bit of the the horn flavor and jacob gorschaltzen a quick shout out to him he plays enough for a whole section man he is just so, so killer so you guys yeah cool for for that lineup a very full yeah sound. it's good it's good it, and it allows us to play places and not take up too much room um yeah just, and yeah. not overpower my <laughs> voice um, you know, I don't think I have a powerful voice. I think I have a specific voice and, uh, I'm really lucky that the musicians I play with, we, we give and take with each other and make sure we all sound good and have a moment to, uh, to make that happen. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Why well, do you think the give and take just between you and you and like we were saying is, you know, you have a very full sound, even though it's just Absolutely. two of you because he's he's also the percussion section and he's mm -hmm. providing melody and he's harmonizing yeah. with you and he's doing all that. And so, uh, you know, well, I, I don't say this lightly, like um, I know I, I, I might sound biased or something because I work so closely with him. But as somebody who went to the jazz clubs as a kid and got to see the greats. Um, Ewan is a, is a great of today. I, and it's just a marvel to me that I, I get to work with him so closely. That's I mean, there's moments, moments and gigs where I'm, I'm, I'm off to the side and I'm, I almost miss my cue because I, I, I'm just so <laughs> digging what everybody's that. doing. It's crazy to me. It's, it's wild. And he may yeah. feel the same way about you. I mean that, you know, <laughs> that, uh, that, that often, uh, makes a great partnership. I'm so a very, that, very, great. very lucky person. And, uh, it's, it's, again, it's not lost on me. How lucky right, I am. Right. Well, you are to me like you two are are just are superb standouts in, in your in your genre in this country, especially absolute standouts. The June Awards are kind of reflecting that, so yeah. <laughs> the nominations are reflecting that right now. So for sure, yeah, I only, for I only sure. see things going up and up and up for you down the road for sure. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, man, I'll come because back anytime. You let me know. Very good, very good. <laughs> well, uh, I think I'm just fascinated that you arrange all this stuff too, because oh, I know, right? you know, um, amazing. I know there was a guy at Columbia Records. I think he was a German guy, Axel something. He used to arrange all Frank's stuff. Axel Stordahl. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, and so like, you're doing all that. So you got again, it's it's praise and blame. It's all on you. Um, it's a ballsy move and it's worked so far. So, I mean, I think that's admirable. Um, Thank you. Well, that's um, also you the, don't know if, you don't often hear about a lot of those cats behind the scene. And so you no. only knew that Frank was there, but there was mm -hmm. a lot of other folks that went into that music. That's yeah, all. of course. Well, I mean, I'm so big into all the people who worked with the singers because I know that those people kind of made the singers in a sense too, right? Like the Axel yeah. Stordals or, I mean, people know Nelson Riddle and they know, you know, yes. Don Costa and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, Ralph Sharon, you mentioned earlier for Tony Bennett, he was an yeah, amazing that's right. for so many years. For um, many, many years. And then, but then you'll have a conversation with somebody that only knows the, or really prefers the Bill Evans stuff. And so- I know, but they only just did, they true. just did two albums together and that was it. They didn't, in the they 70s, didn't do like yeah. 25 years together. Uh, yeah. Frank Sinatra had Bill Miller, who was his piano player for many, many years. He was the piano player on One for My Baby. And then he became his musical right. director and, and they had a long standing history together. But um, yeah, I feel like um, if I, uh, there's a really, really cool history with piano players and uh, singers and the dynamic between the two of them. Uh, and uh, uh, the yeah. the opportunity for them to bring out the best in each other. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 very aware of that history, and and I've tried to take that and apply it to today. And, it's very uh, analogous to you and you, and yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, very nice. Yeah, congrats. Thank you. That's the cool thing, you know, about you know, I guess I guess the plus side about about being a, running everything you're doing is it does force you to kind of get out, get out your element, you know, and actually kind of explore yourself. Well, I can do this. I can do that. Mm. Um, before it was a time there was no you know there's no way you can manage yourself and book yourself be the artist you know and all these things but uh, anyway it's amazing you've done all this stuff on your own in this very challenging uh musical yeah. climate we're in these days i haven't done it all on my own i've had so much help from from people like lola or from you and or my band or people who believed in me along the way um or or you guys having me on here you're helping um and I mean that. Um, yeah, yeah right it's, it's, it's a it's a collaborative effort on many many different fronts. Yeah. I just feel like I'm finally coming into my own where I can um, I can take credit for a little bit, and and that's okay. That's a good thing to do. Um, I'm very lucky to be in that position. So you feel like right now you're kind of in a spot where it's like you know this, the next step is going to be like the, the big big step. You kind of feel <laughs> you're at that, that kind I don't, of point. You never know. There's no guarantee. Uh, you know, I just like Michael Bublé to say my name once. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> just once, please. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. Again, yeah, it uh, does feel like it could be a precipice type moment, though. I mean, the second nomination in a row, and I mean, you, you know, that's not something you have to be. Well, I think it's super close. That's, that's awesome. Awesome. Well, not many people get that. I mean, you there's know, so many people out yeah. there right now making music uh, yeah. in their garages or with friends or at home or you know wherever the heck, and they're not getting nominated. They should Correct. be nominated, but it's just the way it goes sometimes. So yeah. I, yeah. I feel lucky, but there's also a, a, a privilege and a responsibility that comes with it. I feel. Yeah, um, agreed. I, I yeah. Agree. 
Uh, well, there's do, so do much you work going on, on your craft every day. What's a typical day like for you? Well, uh, now that I'm, uh, uh, up here in cobalt, uh, at the shop, most days with Lola running the shop, I'm serving tables. I'm doing everything. I'm always singing. I'm always humming. I'm always working on ideas at the back I of the shop. I come up and have you sign a menu for me. Or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a, Lola gave me a little tiny retail section in the back so you can find my vinyl and my CDs and Very cool. Vinyl, which is really cool. But yeah, I'm always, um, uh, 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 it's funny. Uh, I'm, uh, because I didn't train specifically, I feel like I'm the antithesis to some people who are very regimented. Like before a gig, I've been with other singers and they'll go through vocal exercises and things like that. And yeah. before I go on stage, I'll have a drink and I'll go, hmm, and I'll be like, okay, I'm ready to go. And that's kind of it. And, yeah. and that's probably a terrible thing to do, but I, I like to not think too much about it. Cause, um, I don't know. I, I really operate on, uh, uh, whatever that inside feeling oh, is so intuition uh, by itself. Yeah. There's guys that, yeah. well, I mean, it's, you go, you know, through, through all genres, there's guys that warmed up and believe in that and guys that didn't. And yeah. um, it's not to know. say I don't take care of myself, but, but I, I'm a little more right. lackadaisical about it. Also, when you surround yourself with musicians like Ewan or Jacob or my other band members, like Julian Anderson Bowes or Norbert Bortosh on drums, um, a little bit of the pressure is taken off because you know that you're going to be covered. Yeah, you have good hands. You're That's good true. Hands. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We're a great supporting cast around you. So, absolutely. What does a rehearsal schedule look like? Or do you guys just kind of, we like, we'll say we're, we're doing a jump up. And what we need is we're just going to jump up on stage and do the gig. We didn't rehearse, right? So, we, we, you and I <laughs> usually have some sessions together, but for the most part, we don't, we don't have rehearsals. Um, uh, once in a while, we'll have some things come up and we do it. But for the most part, we're, we're there live on our gigs, uh, figuring it out on the spot and That's experimenting. Cool. You a lot of magic that way. You don't leave it all in the gym. I hear a lot you. of bad stuff, but a lot of good <laughs> stuff too. <laughs> good analogy. I like that analogy. Really cool. But I just think about it. It is a lot and all. It's like, you know, uh, I, imagine is. what you do, Trey. It's like if you had a fighter that trained himself for a fight and then went out there and was winning, right? That's you right. Yeah, totally. It would be really cool, but you wouldn't expect it, right? Yeah. So Correct. Yeah, it's very true. In fact, I know a guy like that out of Canada who's actually doing it all for himself, and um, he's you know he's kind of treading through himself through this really tough and really unclear pathway to get mm. to that top, where the top mm. is. But um, mm. yeah, it's like you're like you're saying too. It's it's a tough going, but uh, you definitely say you have a really great niche, and I don't see why. And you know, again, the nominations just kind of lead to you know obviously to me how leads what's going to happen to you next. It's going to be Really great, great stuff. It just gives you opportunities. It, it, people it, say, yeah, it really this guy, let me check him out. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. the hardest thing is just to get somebody to put you on the damn table turntable. There's well, so no. much out oh, there no. that yeah. that's yeah. the biggest challenging. You think to yourself, if I could just get somebody to listen to this, right? Yeah. And that's why I've done my. Not, that's why we've know? done our own music because there's a lot of people that they have great voices, but they're just doing what a bunch of other people are doing. And yep. it just makes it tougher to get heard. So yep. that's that's why we've done what we've done. That's cool. That's a cool it perspective. I like that. Well, before you go, let's just say a quick, we kind of touched on it earlier, but uh, what is really next for you after this EP? <laughs> we have uh, plans yeah. in the works. I can't mention what the album is, but we're uh, basically done the next album, another 12-song album, and it'll be bringing my Jazz Mavericks back for a full oh, thing. Oh, very cool. Great line of ones. We'll figure it out. Thank you. Yeah, but cool. uh, yeah. And again, well, I, I got the next album after that sort of sketched out and some other things. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you're plenty out. busy then. This guy's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so while, you, while you're waiting tables, you got songs no running through your head. All the time. Those I'm always whistling oh, and yeah. annoying people and yeah, working. I love it. <laughs> I thought I worked a lot. Oh my God. I love it. I got nothing on you. <laughs> no, don't say that. No, We're I know working. that thing. I know that thing. I'll be driving the car and all of a sudden I'm, where's my phone? I gotta sing this into I know. it. <laughs> <laughs> So true, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, multitasking. Oh yeah, what's what's the grocery list today? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's it's the song. Never ending. Yeah, so true. <laughs> well, before we go, so uh, where can people check out more on you and of course your awesome music? Of course, there's only so far one Alex Bird. Thankfully, so uh, alexbird.net is uh, you can find my website. I'm waiting for the .ca guy to get the hell out of the way, uh, and then uh, yeah, I'm all over the place. You can find us. Very cool, very cool. Hey man, once again, a pleasure having you back on the show. Again, Absolute pleasure. Thank years. you very much, Noel Mark. Yeah, it means yeah. a lot. Always a great hangout with you, always as always. Of course, with this it's guy too. Here, Mark Judah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about us. All right. 
And, yeah, uh, don't forget about me. Don't get too, famous on, don't get too uh, famous on us. I, I, I couldn't. All right. Too big on us. Thanks so much. Take Congratulations. Care. All yeah, the best, a lot. man. Okay, we're rooting for you. Thank yeah, you. It means absolutely. a lot. All right, take all right, care. All brother. Be yeah, good. Thanks, of course, folks. Remember, check out Zingo TV for all the news. Watch it, hear it, read it, download it, and live it. And hey, man, love it. Thank you, Alex Bird. And thank you to Mark Cool Dude Duda. And thank you for watching. We'll see you real soon. Be good. Cheers. Take care. Take care.